Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating an ombre wave pattern in Adobe Illustrator and it's not as easy as it looks. Let's have a look at it. I'm going to create a brand new file. I'm creating one that's 1920 by 1080. Yours can be any size that you like. We're going to start with the line segment tool. I'm just going to draw a line in my document. I'm going to increase the stroke. This is going to be ultimately the weight of the line I'm going to use. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit longer at this point. We're going to apply an effect to it with effect, distort and transform and then zigzag. Now you need enough of these loops to actually work with. So don't be hesitant in creating loops. So what we are actually going to use in a minute is from here to here, but we need plenty of it. So I'm just going to look at the loop that I want to create. I've got it set to smooth here. Ridges per segment of four is just perfect. I'll click OK. This is a line that has an effect applied to it. You can see that we're still seeing the underlying line with the selection there. So we're going to expand it with object expand appearance. And now the line gets its little anchor points along it. We're going to the direct selection tool. So I'm just going to go here and select this anchor point. And we're going to use the scissors tool that shares a toolbar position with the eraser tool. With that anchor point visible, just click on it because that allows you to delete it. I'm actually going to delete this one at the same time. I can still see it makes it nice and easy. Click to delete it. Now you're going to the direct selection tool, select over these points at the end of the line and remove them. So this is going to be part of our wave. Well, it would if it worked, but it's not going to work. So I'm going to show you why not. Let's choose object expand to actually expand this into a filled shape. I'm going to alt drag a second one of these away, holding the shift key at the same time so that it moves in a perfectly vertical direction. I'm going to change the color of this. Let me just move it back up. And you can see immediately what the problem is. You can see that these lines don't butt up against each other. So they're actually being slightly distorted and it's not going to look particularly good in the pattern later on if we don't have a really big space between the lines. If we have a big space, we can probably hide it, but a close-up space, no, it's going to be really obvious that there's something weird going on here. So this is the way we're going to resolve it. What I'm going to do is put the red line up touching the black line. Now, if you're not sure what's going on, choose view and then outline, and then you can zoom in and have a look and say that you've got your red line or the bottom most line right on top of the topmost. Now you can see that these are not perfectly meeting up here. You can see also that these are not lined up really nicely on the edge. Let me just go and select them and line them up on the edge first. Now let's check the outline mode. That's a better join. You can see they're just touching there. That's perfect. So let's just go back to our document, we're going to add a rectangle here. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool, make sure I just have a fill, no stroke. That's really important. I'm also going to change my fill color so it's easier for you to see what's going on. And I'm going to use my smart guides here to drag a rectangle over my shape. I'm also going to make sure that it covers everything and I'm going to place it behind everything with object, arrange, send to back. Now, before we go too much further, we just need to make sure that everything looks nicely aligned. We can check that in outline mode. You can see we're not seeing any double lines here. Everything looks really neat and tidy. So I'm going to select everything and use the Shape Builder tool. Here it is. It shares a toolbar position with the Live Paint Bucket tool. With the Shape Builder tool, what we're going to do is remove this piece. So hold the Alt key option on a Mac and just click on that to remove it. We're also going to remove the red piece here, alt click. This piece, alt click. But all the rest of this needs to be a single shape. So what I'm going to do this time is not use the alt key, just use my left mouse button and drag over this area, drag here and drag here, so that this is now all one shape. Now, if I check in the layers palette, you will see that I've got a few stray pieces here and there. I can just check and see where they are. Doesn't look like there's too much there. I'm just going to grab everything and merge it. So let's grab the whole lot and let's go to the Pathfinder palette and just click on Unite. And so that gives me a single shape. Now, if I drag a duplicate away, change its color and run it up next to the existing shape, you'll see that they're nice match for each other. So that gives us a starting point for our pattern. 
So I'm going back to my document. I'm going to move my red shape up here, my pink shape here. I'm going to alt drag another shape and I'm going to change its color. Now at this stage, it doesn't matter what colors you're using. I need another one of these. So I'm going to alt drag this down here and then I'm going to alt drag this down here. We need to make sure that the spacing here is equal and that they're all nicely lined up. So I'm using the align options up here. You can also use the align palette with window and align. So I'm going to align their left sides. I'm also going to choose this option, which is vertical distribute center to make sure everything is nicely spaced. Before you use the blend tool, however, you need to make sure that these are in the right order and they're not. Because if you blend them as they are now, Illustrator uses the order in the layers palette for the blending and it's going to go haywire. So this is what your blend would look like. You can see it's got holes in it, so it's not correct. So I'm just going to undo that and we're going to fix these first. I'm going to locate where this shape is in the path. I'm going to put it at the bottom because it's at the bottom of this list. Then I'm going to locate this shape and put it second to bottom. This one goes in the middle. This one goes at the second to top position and this one should be the top. So I'm making sure that they're in the same order in the document as they were in the layers palette. So now that I've got these, I'm ready to make my blend. So I'll choose object blend make. I'm going to double click on the blend tool. I want to use specified steps. I want there to be obviously a lot less steps. I just want one so there's one intermediary color you may be able to fit more that's just fine i'll click ok now while we're still working with this we can change the colors so i'm going to the recolor artwork dialog going to advanced options and then i'm going to edit and here if i unlink the harmony colors I can start dragging these colors around and this is going to change the entire blend so if you didn't like the starter colors, you didn't have the colors that you want, or you got a blend that you didn't particularly like, then you can come in here and start adjusting your blend because this is going to be your final pattern. So I'm just finding something here that I like, and when I'm happy, I'll just click OK. Now I'm going to expand my blend. When you're expanding a blend, use Object and then Blend and then Expand. Now before we make a pattern out of this, I'm going to change the color of one of these two end pieces because it's going to be easier for us to identify it and to line everything up as a result. So I'm going to turn it into a totally different color. Now I'm going to select everything and choose Object Pattern Make. Now I'm looking here and saying that the width is not a whole number, so I'm going to make sure this icon looks like this so I can individually adjust these values. I'm just bringing the width down to a whole number. It looks like everything's lined up really well. I'm happy with that. What I'm not happy with is this green line, obviously. So let's just shrink this a little bit and let's zoom into the area that we're interested in, which is where these blue and green lines are. And we're going to start decreasing the height. And what we want to happen is for one line to go directly over the other. So we don't want to be able to see the green. Now, if you're seeing green and not blue, all you're going to do is change this icon here. This alters the layering. So if you're seeing green, make sure to click on one of these two options to change it around. So I'm really happy with this right now. I'm also looking at the layers palette here and I can select this green one since I don't need that any longer because I only used it for alignment purposes. I'm actually going to delete it and then I'll click done. These elements, the green is still here because the pattern doesn't actually adjust the starter elements. So don't be surprised that you're still going to see the green there. Let's test our pattern with a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. In my case, that's 1920 by 1080. I'm going to square this up on the artboard. With the fill selected here, I'm going to click on my pattern. And now to scale it, I'll choose Object Transform Scale. I'm going to disable transform objects and just change the uniform value so that we can see this pattern at full size. 
So there is our completed ombre pattern. You can see it goes from dark to light and then back to dark again and then to light. So this is a perfect ombre design. You can make it obviously with lots more waves if you start with your elements further apart or perhaps smaller elements. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.